Hey guys, this is Odd1 Gaming. This is going to be another Dragon Air Silent Gods video. Well, today's video is a little bit of an exciting one because uh, I have started a free to play series, my first ever free to play series in Dragon Air Silent Gods, where I'm going to be playing straight up from season one again, you know, just starting everything over. And I'm not going to spend, you know, any money on this account. I'm not going to get any content creator perks or anything. But that's not the only exciting one. The exciting thing about this one is the fact that I'm not the only one that actually started playing this. There's actually a bunch of us content creators. It was, you know, me and Ivy uh, were debating doing this because there's been some updates in season one, as all of you might have been aware. So, you know, there was some negativity around that, but we tried to switch it up and make a positive. So we said... Let's try and get a, a free-to-play series started. So we're going to be back in the loop with what's happening for those of you that maybe are watching or starting playing Dragon Air for the first time. So when we're talking about content creators, there's quite a few of us involved. So there's obviously me and Ivy League Gaming. Ivy League Gaming is my wife, for those of you that do not know. Then we have JRM The Killer, Will Sunbox, Meteor Storm Gaming, Ragewood, Crenadon, Hell Hades is due to make an account. There's also Ash, Seth, and Scratch, which which have also recently started a uh, free-to-play series, like in the last week as well. So what we're planning to do is, you know, try and play as much as we can, the bunch of us together. Like at least the first ones should be on the same ser server. But also with uh, Ash, Seth, and Scratch, we're gonna try and keep having uh, kind of like collabs. You know, we want to try and have collabs between us because I know first of all the community likes it. Second of all, it's really fun. You know, it gets it gets the community engaged, it gets the content creators knowing each other and getting us engaged. So hopefully it's gonna be fun. If you want to start playing the, this free to play series with us and you want to be on the same server as us the server is called Winsper Forest 9 we started our account yesterday uh it was day two today's day three so if you go let me show you. if you go over here into the game and you go to settings and then you click switch character it should give you this one if you go to new server list you see that this one has already gone to 10 so do not start on 10 but you can go and when you create a new account it should allow you to select invite list okay and when you, oh, you're going to have the server invite code, you're basically going to put this code over here, okay? If you put this code, you should be joining the same server as us, and then the alliance is called free to play ish 2024 If you do join the alliance with us, and like I said, if you want to start playing with us, make sure you join Ivy's Discord, because we have some channels in Ivy's Discord that are going to be related to this. I'm going to leave, uh, leave a link anyway to her uh, Discord in the description of this video. I'm going to put this code over there as well, so you can join us. So you know what? Let's start Dragon Air free to play again and let's see how uh, this one's looking. Let's see how the these changes have affected season one. And I'm going to say it from the beginning. It's massive. It's huge. It's insane. It's it's so much better. This is something that we have been saying as content creators from the beginning that, you know, it feels like the game was a little bit too stingy. But with this one, honestly, this is the, you know, this is the right way. Basically, if you start playing the game and you see that it gives yourself five, 10 helo lights then you get a free legendary then you get some master scrolls then you're gonna get some more rewards as you unlock every single day do keep in mind i think these ones are only for the first seven days so if you miss these ones uh, i'm not sure again it's the first time i'm doing it so i'm not 100 sure if after seven days they disappear or not but obviously you're gonna try and do this one as soon as possible but getting helo lights getting a free legendary then a legendary artifact is massive we still get once we get to the second part you know we're still gonna have the UTR event then it's going to be the usual stuff but also we do have this one over here we still get the hero lights from defeating the bosses and we still get war model we still get average as well there's so many more rewards so many more healer lights they uh it's i don't know it's just, it's just insane i just love it like i'm uh let me just show you a few of my summons so for example i started playing and obviously uh, as soon as you start playing, you're gonna start pulling and because of the way that they give us a ton of summons I would suggest just easily just go on ahead and start summoning your hero lights on the AT banner because if I saw correctly from those polls, uh, it's it's definitely gonna be you know you're definitely gonna be getting to that AT in the first months because even just part of the story when you beat like those tower defenses, every single tower defense has a helio light. It's it's mind blowing. This is the perfect time, honestly, to start playing Dragon Air Silent Gods. If you need, even if you don't want to start playing just you know the free to play, but if you do want to start playing, this is definitely the time because there's you know it's so much better. It's so much better, and I'm hoping that they're gonna. Try 
try to do, even though they made a statement saying they're going to try and implement the same things in the future for seasons two and three and whatever other ones are going to come after. But for this season, it's just amazing. It's just, you know, it's it blew my mind. It blew my mind how many heal lights you can get before you would have to play maybe a month in order to get a legendary. And spoiler alert, I already got the legendary. OK, I already got the legendary. You're going to see in the summons like I, I did pull my uh Hero lights and my starlight. Like I said, I had like I have like four videos where I showed my pull. So for example, this one was four years an epic, but at least when it comes to the rares, it was really funny to me because the first two and the third one I had got three rally ones. And then when I got to the epic, uh, I got Hexandra as a healer, which we get from the story. But I got Alfie as a wild one. So Alfie is really good, especially because I showed you earlier, you get Average as a free legendary. So he is a wild hero. And if you pair Alfie with him, he's just going to be amazing. He's a really good enabler for wild uh, for wild characters. Now, this is the second one where, again, every time I had like some five pulls of of uh, starlight or heal lights i kept pulling them because when you are early game you know within the beginning starting pushing your teams it's really important to try and find your first core team like what's gonna be the first people what are gonna be the first uh team that you're gonna be focused on number one priority as always is going to be having a team for goblin's lair to be able to farm uh xp potions because xp potions is gonna be something that you're gonna need a ton of so you can keep building more and more characters okay definitely keep that in mind so from that point of view that means what do you need for the goblins lair where it's lots of uh it's five goblins they keep coming in waves well that means that what you will need is aoe heroes so that should be priority number one in the first week try and build some aoe heroes i think this was an insane poll it was five rares but let me just check the rares yagnats even though he's a rare he can be really good dancers but look at this I got Sigrid, I got Quarian, I got Welby. All three amazing <laughs> rares. Sigrid is arguably the best rare in the whole game. Like, honestly, she's borderline legendary. She's so amazing. She's 100% on the uh, to-build list. If you haven't seen it, just check on my channel on this one. I have, you know, top 10 rares, top 10 epics. I have, I have all those lists. And you're going to see Sigrid and Quarian on every single one of those lists. So these ones are definitely game-changing for me. And that was massive. And... Uh, there's a couple of more. I did not get anything like uh, game breaking. I'm not going to lie. And I'm kind of happy. I'm ha happy I didn't get that because if I would have gotten you know, the best epics in the game and the best legendaries in the game early on, maybe it would defeat the purpose of having a free to play account. Catherine, though, Catherine's a really good one. Uh, she brings healing. She brings debuff immunity, which can help with the Grave of Venom. It can help with Vortex once you hit the four difficulty. Eli got another good poison. Loris, a good tank. Altair, decent one. Gusni, uh, eh, so so. Like Gusni and Altair, maybe I would not build, but Eli can be a really good AoE hitter. Catherine, amazing healer. So again, she's amazing, but she's not tiered. She's not top tiered. She's definitely uh, better. This is the one that I actually recorded on my phone. I'm going to have to cut it because I was playing last night up until like, I think it was 2 a.m. Because like I said, uh, I started a little bit late because the missus was streaming. Ivy was streaming when she did this. And then I had to catch up myself. Uh, I started a bit later. I was, you know, uh, hanging out with my baby girl, Lily, and all that. So I started a bit later. So I had to catch up till later in the night. But... This was in, this was interesting. So these was my uh, starlights again, and then I hit an epic. I got this lightning one, which I've never played with, and I got Meredith. Keep in mind this one over here. She's an uncommon, but she can be a really good healer. If you don't have better healers, Meredith is really good. But if you got Quarian and Hexandra, you should be just fine. So definitely keep that in mind. When it comes to the lightning epic, I still have to have a look, because I'm not sure he's really uh you know anything too impressive i've not played with him though i might be surprised he does bring some accuracy penalty and attack penalty but the healer light is really the main event and guess what i hit my legendary i actually hit the legendary this definitely changes you know when you when you start playing the game and you see that you can get the legendary day one it definitely gets you more excited and i actually got vinyara She's not S tier, but she's a little bit the next uh, tier. Like, you know, I'm not trying to undervalue her. I'm just trying to say that she's not the best in the game. However, she's really good. She brings uh, attack penalty on the ultimate. She brings shield and increased defense on the battle skill. She has low cooldown. Nathaniel is an amazing support as well. So Bronwyn, another wild one. So, you know, I kind of see a little bit of a wild team shaping up, but... I'm not going to be building the wild team because wild are single target. Okay, keep that in mind. 
what did I say earlier? Priority number one, Goblin Slayer. You want an AoE team. Obviously, you're going through the story and whatnot, but you want to have a team that does AoE damage that's going to be good for Goblin, okay? I got lots of dupes in here, and then I got Estella. I'm not going to lie. I have a ton of healers. I have too many healers. <laughs> I don't need that many healers uh, early on. So that, that those are my polls. Now let's just have a quick look at them, see what I have to play with. So I kind of had this team built, but this was what I did Vortex at the end of the day with. However, your priority should be, like I said, Goblin's Lair. And again, number two thing that you 100% want to keep in mind, take advantage of the Clipside Torrent, okay? What does this do? Well, for five days and two hours, you can constantly go and free reset these ones, and then you keep getting back the resources and you can build somebody else and reset and build somebody else. You can take advantage of that because what's what you will be doing Doing is like I said, you're going to be doing Goblin's Lair, which is going to be try to keep getting more and more XP potions. But then after that, you're going to be doing domains. And when you're doing domains, you have to keep in mind the higher you go, the less effective people of the same element would be. So, for example, if you go to from stage five upward, fire and poison damage taken by enemies are reduced by 30%. Then, once we get to this stage to eight, it's by 60. And you know, it goes higher and gets lower and lower. So, you kind of get the gist. Basically, what you want to, uh, what you will want to do is if you're going to try and farm this one, you're going to try to not bring your poison and fire team, even though that may be your best team. Okay. You might want to have a second team, you know, a backup team where you're going to come and farm this one. Same principle for uh, Frost Domain and same principle for Tempest. Don't bring the same elements when it comes to higher stages as it's going to be more difficult. Now, when it comes to the Goblin Slayer, let me quickly show you what I believe I'm going to try to build. But again, it depends. What else am I going to pull? Because if I get if I get some more uh, Hero Lights, okay, you know what? We have a few more Starlight. Let's see. We can get Legendaries from Starlight as well. So how crazy would that be? But you're basically going to build, like I said, you're going to have a look at uh, what's going to be your best AoE people, okay? what's What are your best AoE hitters so you can easily farm the Goblin's Lair? Because if you don't have an easy Goblin team, then you're going to struggle with everything else and you will always want to try and farm the highest level possible because, as you can see, if I'm stage 6, if I'm stage 1, I use the same amount of stamina. So that's really important to keep in mind. Now, let me quickly show you as an example what I think my Goblin team would be. So for now, because obviously I don't have the best options, I will have to reset and bring them in here. But I think my goblin team would be Letalis. He does a big AoE hit on this one with some debuffs. Single target over here. Then Sigrid. Sigrid can be really powerful if you pair her with other people that bring debuffs. Because she's going to do this damage to all enemies inflicted with debuffs. So she's really powerful if you have some other people that bring debuffs. And she can do a ton of damage. Then I'm going to have somebody like a Frorbet or a Forbet or maybe somebody like a Horus. I think maybe I'm going to switch over to Horus as a tank. Because he can be really good with this one. Plus the passive. He's a really good tank early on. If you don't get stronger ones like Frorbath, like Garius, Isolde, you know, stuff like that. So I might just use him and turn off his ultimate so he can keep aggroing people to him. And then... Adventurer, I'm going to use him as a fire because that's the best one that deals damage, okay? Fire one, if you need some support, you go ice. If you need damage, you go with fire. And then I might have a healer, but this might change later on. If my tank will be strong enough to survive on its own, I'm just going to have a tank with 4 DPS and, and I'm going to go with it. I don't see anything else that I believe could be better, but again, I might still be testing. However, for now, this looks to be my best one for AoE damage. I could also go with Rally, but something that I learned today is, well, Rally people, at least the rares, there's no enabler. <laughs> Unless they have somebody that also already gives them like a, a Rally early, then you don't you have a problem because nobody places Rally. And if nobody places Rally, they're not going to be as good. But I think I'm going to leave it at this for today. Just wanted to have, you know, the introduction of this saying I'm going to be really excited. I'm going to try and make updated videos. I'm going to try to make as many videos as I can on this one. Talking about the Goblin Lair, talking about new teams for the Grave of Venom, because now we have 12 stages, domains, like maybe every time I pass to the new threshold, I show you something. And then, you know, I'm going to try and make as many videos as I can, try and have some collabs, like I said. Again, this is the list of the amazing content creators that participate here. Ivy League Gaming, myself, Jerem, The Killer, Wilson Box, Meteor Store Gaming, Ragewood, Crinadon, Hell Hades, Ash, Saf, and Scratch. So, you know, 
If you're a content creator selling CDs, you want to join, why not? You know, join the fun. Let's have some fun. This is, uh, you know, trying to trying to uh, see the positive, I guess, in the whole uh, situation now with the update of season one. Because from the season one perspective, it's amazing. It's the best thing they have done. Well done, Dragonair. Keep the same work on to the to the next, uh, you know, to the next things that you're gonna do. But yeah. I'm gonna leave it at this for today. Again, there's gonna be a link to IVS Discord in the description of this video. There's gonna be a link. There's gonna be this code as well if you wanna join to be on the same server as us. Let's do this free to play series and let's have some fun. But yeah, thank you all for watching, guys. As always, if you do enjoy my content, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel to see when I upload next, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace, love, take care, everyone. Bye, guys.